Today on Mr. Media, I'll talk to longtime Monty Python film editor Julian Doyle about his new book, The Life of Jesus, which spins out from the film Monty Python's Life of Brian. Stick around. I smell blasphemy in the air. So much media, so little time. Who keeps track of it all? That would be me. This is Bob Andelman, and this is Mr. Media Interview. You know, MrMedia.com, MRMedia.com. Stop by and check it out. There are more than 700 archived celebrity and pop culture interviews for your listening pleasure. The show is brought to you today by Audible. Audible is offering Mr. Media listeners a free audiobook download and a 14-day trial offer to give you a chance to check out their very cool service. I love listening to books on tape. If you've never tried it before, actors or sometimes the authors themselves read to you. It's great for the commute, the beach, or even unwinding before bed. You can choose a free audiobook from Audible's enormous library of titles. Those include today's top Monty Python-related bestsellers, such as Monty Python's Tunisian Holiday, My Life with Brian by Kim Howard Johnson, The Pythons, Autobiography by The Pythons, by Bob McCabe, John Cleese, and Michael Palin, or even Michael Palin's Diaries, 1969 to 1979, The Python Years. You could even download Will Eisner, A Spirited Life, the biography of the comic book and graphic novel legend, which I wrote and will read to you personally. To download your free audiobook today, go to audibletrial.com slash radio. Again, that's audibletrial.com slash radio for your free audiobook. Mr. Media is recorded live before a studio audience that includes the Reverend Arthur Belling, Cardinal Zimenez, Cardinal Fang, Cardinal Biggles, D.P. Gumby, Mr. Eric Praline, Mr. Nudge, and of course, Kate Middleton, in the new New Media capital of the world, St. Petersburg, Florida. Okay, who's up for a little blasphemy? Oh, so many of you. Well, you've come to the right place. Joining me today from London is the author of The Life of Brian, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, The Life of Jesus, Julian Doyle. Doyle is not your usual commentator on matters of the Christian church and the man for whom it is named. Instead, he's the longtime editor of Monty Python films, such as Monty Python and the Holy Grail, Monty Python's Meaning of Life, Jabberwocky, Time Bandits, Brazil, Wind in the Willows, and the film that brought us all here today, Monty Python's Life of Brian. Doyle's book, The Life of Jesus, walks two paths. Primarily, it examines similarities between the Python film, the Holy Bible, and what is actually known about the life of Jesus Christ. But it also offers several intimate glimpses behind the scenes of the 1979 film, Monty Python's Life of Brian. Is Life of Jesus for every Python fan? Uh, probably not. It raises all kinds of questions that some loyal Christians might not care to consider. And it's only a Python book in part, so if you're looking for a funny memoir of flying circus days, don't expect too much of that. But if you're that rare individual who can handle <coughs> pardon me, who can handle having your religious beliefs questioned and still practice daily for a position in the ministry of silly walks, step right up. Julian Doyle, welcome to Mr. Media. Uh, nice to be here in Florida. I'm unfortunately in London, which isn't I, as warm like as Florida. I'd like to be in London. Maybe we could work out a little switch sometime. You come here, I'll come there. Right Looks like we've got fine movies in the background playing. So, uh, yeah, we've got uh, Life of kind Brian of a 24 going. Twenty-four hour thing with you, huh? Uh, well, I'd like to have something oh, okay. to refer to <laughs> if I need to. Well, we can talk about any of those pictures. Okay. I know a little story about I, well, all of them. Let's, I mean, let's get to the, to the core issue of the book. Was Life of Brian the film, was it blasphemous to anyone but the vicar of St. Looney up the, up the cream bun and jam? Um, it depends how you define blasphemy. I mean, it's insulting. Anybody who feels it insults their religion is, it's blasphemy. So it is blasphemous. Yes, people were upset by it. Um, the Christians were upset by it. The rabbis came out because John Cleese had a hat on that was accurate uh, in the stoning scene. So people were, it was blasphemy. 
But any Christian who uses the term blasphemy should be very careful because it is the only crime that Jesus committed. And so it's rather disrespectful of Jesus to go around accusing anybody of blasphemy. He is, the only crime he is accused of and sentenced to death for is blasphemy. So Christians should wear away from the word blasphemy at all. Please. I should correct something else as well. The book is called Life of Brian Jesus, and the word Brian is crossed out. I asked, is this all right to do that? And uh, the publisher said, yes, it's fine. We now find there's a whole load of problems related with having a crossed out word <laughs> in the title of a book. So anyway, the, it is, it, it's going to feel like blasphemy to some people because... I've tried to draw uh, the parallels between our film, Life of Brian, and other films, and which is the most accurate. It started, the, the idea of the book, I mean, the book is an accident. It started by somebody saying, would you like to do a documentary? I just finished the film Chemical Wedding. And um, some people came and said, is there a documentary you'd like to do? I said, I'd love to do a documentary about why Life of Brian is the most ap accurate biblical film ever. And they said, well, you better write some notes. I mean, what do you mean? So I sat down, and after 200 pages and only getting halfway through the book, through the film, I realised this is a book. This is not a film, a, a documentary at all. It's going to go on and on, you know. So I ended up writing a book. So it was totally accidental, um, but it got rid of a load of things that were spinning well, around I in my about head. That. <clears throat> at what point did you start thinking about these things? Because it, you know, as I say, it. It, it's of interest to a Python fan in that there's Python information, but I mean the the larger purpose of the book is not really Python. I don't think. Oh no, the 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 purpose of the book was simply spilling things out from my brain, as Terry jo Terry Jones said. It's the uh, it's a mischievous journey of discovery, um, and I just took every scene. I started scene by scene working through the film and what I'd learned over years and I'd always been fascinated by ancient Egypt, ancient uh, Greece, biblical history and I just sort of wrote, I think it took me, I don't know, two months to actually get the basics down. It then took, you know, four or five months to, uh, <laughs> to correct the spelling and all that. But uh, the original book, actually, it just spilled out from my brain. I mean, it was, it's all been in there for years, you know. And uh, so it was, it was great. It was, it was lovely to write. I really enjoyed it. I could spill, spill into this and that. And each scene offered something different. So one scene might be an anecdotal scene, you know, something that happened on the set. Another scene, another scene I'll be finding that the editing of the film was what, what was interesting about it. Like the haggling. I do a long section about why the haggling seemed to not work when it, you know, it worked in rushes and then didn't work otherwise. So... At times I'm going into the editing process and how the editing process works. At other times I'm going into, was this, you know, why was this seen more accurate? And there were times when I, the Pythons had researched something like uh, they'd researched that at stonings, women weren't allowed to go to stonings. So they write a scene that the women <laughs> put on beards uh, and go to a stoning. So... What's funny about that scene is that the women who are pretending to be men with beards are in fact the pythons. So it's men pretending to be women <laughs> pretending to be men, which is quite a real weird one. But the stoning is a very inter you know, it's interesting um, uh, story that they researched. Then the costume department researched um, John Cleese's hat and got into trouble because it was too accurate. Um, and the stoning is, in fact, leads us to a whole load of things because, in fact, it's very strange that the, the Jewish council proclaimed Jesus blasphemous and should be sentenced to death. And the one thing we know about that time is that you could sentence people to death. The Jewish council was sentenced to people to death and they were stoned to death and then hung on a tree. That's the, that's the actual method of... of, of so it becomes a problem about why did they go to Pilate. So these are things that I explore in the film. And then